Rock, rock, rock me, mama. Welcome back. Welcome. This is Rock Me Mama. I'm Macy. And I'm Amy. And uh, we are here drinking and talking. We're drinking our new sponsor, uh, Maker Wine. Product placement, baby. Yes, honey. Um, who are you drinking? I'm drinking a sparkling Riesling by Nicole Walsh, and it is delicious. It's crisp and light, and it's not too sweet. Love I was, it. I always am scared when I hear the word Riesling. Yeah, yeah, because mm-hmm. it does get a little sugary. Yeah. But none Super of these good. have sugar. It's no sugar. Yeah, no hangover. I'm drinking Gianna Fugazi. Mm. Fugazi. This is, this is my favorite of all of the Maker Wines. What is it? Is it the Alberino? Verdello. No, I love that one too. Verdello. I don't think you've had this one. Oh. It's it's the best one. Amazing. That's so good. So yeah, this is our I love drinking. This is our first little sponsor. As long as 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 long as I'm not pregnant, I'll I'll drink. That's my rule. Yeah. If I'm not pregnant, drinks and will be sometimes poured. when I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. I'll have an occasional glass of wine. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I think that people feel ashamed to say that. I had wine while I was pregnant too. Oh, people always feel ashamed, but not me. <laughs> Americans feel ashamed. Yeah. Europeans don't. No, they don't. No. No, I have tons of friends that have a glass of wine if they're pregnant. Yeah, it's totally fine. Everything's fine. Um so okay, so let's let's talk about where you're at because you've been on this breastfeeding hell train. Yeah. um, Um, thank you for not using the word journey because hell train. It's been a hell train. Yeah. Uh for four months now. All aboard. All aboard the hell train. Yeah. And I always tell you my, I don't think things got easier for us until around six months. Yeah. And people tell you three weeks, four weeks. Mm-hmm. No. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. But you've, ex- you've been experiencing stuff that I honestly have never even heard of. Yeah. So I think maybe just get into that because a lot of women. Yeah. Well. Probably want to know. I shared something on my Instagram last week or the week before about just kind of breastfeeding in general. And I mentioned all of the issues that we have had, one of those, which has really been just like a snowball effect of issues, is all of Wyatt's oral ties. Um, so what? So how many does he have? He had. They've been released. Yeah. He had four, and his. So a tie is. We all have them. It's like if you yeah. looked up your mm-hmm. your lip, your lip right here. Yeah. It's that like thing yeah. that keeps it attached. He the had them, ta- the taint of the mouth, if yes, you will. That. Um, he had <laughs> one on each cheek. And Wait, if we, again, we all yes. So up here and then up here. And then his tongue was attached to the very tip of his, or the, the his tongue tie was attached to the literal tip of his tongue. Wow. Like literally right here. So like he couldn't he couldn't move it, which is so why he had to get it. Oh, it wasn't an yeah. option. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't an option. Um, so we had that done at eight days and the, the reason we're like talking about this right now, I had, when I posted that I had so many women message me saying, I have done it too. I've done it too. I wish more people talked about it. Yeah. And I didn't know that it was a thing. Um, yeah, and it's either. really common. It's a really common, oh gosh, yeah, yeah, it's really common. And so, um, the reason we found out about it, well, and actually what's, before I even say that, what's interesting is Chase brought this up literally like two or three days ago when we were in the hospital, the nurse, the like, on, not the labor and delivery floor, the postpartum floor, whatever it's yeah. called, the sweet nurses that just like take care of you. Um, she said, you know, I'm obviously not a pediatrician, but I do think that he has a tongue tie. And we were like, okay. Like, was it because he, was, he we don't know what that is. I think it was so visible, like it was so big that it was like visible enough when he opened his mouth. Um, And we were like, okay. And so we get home, breastfeeding was like, okay. And then we get home and probably around day four, breastfeeding became painful is not even, that doesn't even like agonizing, like bone chilling. Yeah, like like, when they latch I mean, literally the most painful i I've, I've said this several times now but i have delivered both of my children without medication this was more painful yeah. than both of my deliveries i i used to say that all the time like i found breastfeeding the, the beginning of it more painful than c-section recovery yeah i mean like i literally was like this is the most agonizing and some women don't it doesn't bother them yeah for me it was she sucked so hard yeah and we were told she had something not like that 
I know. We I wonder if she had some form that she of had tie. some sort of tie or some yeah. sort of like tension. Um, she, my nipples were bleeding like yours. Oh yeah, bleeding, yeah. cracked at yeah. all times, like mastitis, the whole thing. They call it. Um, you probably had this too, like a lipstick nipple. So you know, I think I've said this before on the show, but just for sake of this, I don't being think you have, podcast, and I'm like already actually really. Okay, scared. you know when you like use a lipstick yeah tube a lot, it gets the shape of like that. <gasps> No, so yeah, when they have a totally. tie, that's what happens to your nipple because they can only suck yeah. half of it. And yeah. so they pull Oof. off in your nipple. Oh. Yeah. And oh. so that's where the pain comes in. And for it all of the hurts. men listening, which is literally Bill, Nick, and Chase. Um, and our 700 Creeper fans. Nipples have more nerve endings than the tip of a penis. Really? Mm-hmm. Every time I remind Chase of that, he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. yeah. So when, it, when he latched and he was sucking on half yeah. of my nipple. Yeah. So that there's was why nothing I had the reaction more, that I had. There was nothing more painful. And yeah. then you realize, I mean, you realize why there's all those things. There's the ice. Oh my God, everything. And the nipple creams. Nipple and the, shields. And you're like, this can't be that bad before you do it. You're like, yeah. this is not going to be that bad. Uh, and it is. Because there is this idea that breastfeeding is natural. Yes. When in fact, like the act of breastfeeding, yeah. like the fact that our bodies produce milk and our babies know, yeah. like they're born knowing it's an innate, an innate yes. thing that that happens, mm-hmm. but there's nothing natural about no, it. It takes education and yeah. it takes practice. And people are like, well, back in the day, yeah, a lot of babies died back in the day, by the by the way. Right. Like, and women all, were all, probably just in, constantly in pain. When there was no information and this wasn't being talked about, it's not like, like people actually know what they're talking about now. Babies right. would die. <laughs> right. Just like women used to die in labor more yeah. than they do now. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that, you know, that's probably why ties aren't, and maybe they are a more common thing. And I just didn't know. I don't think that that's true though. I just, I, we did not know about them. And then even beyond that, we did not know that four months later, we would still be dealing, dealing with, with the repercussions of having oral ties. So what's happening now? So, and cause you guys have kind of made like 10 steps forward, 10 steps back. Yes. For and four that's months kind now. of how that's kind of, Apparently Another the saying I didn't get right. What is it? Ten steps forward, two steps back? Uh, one step forward, two steps oh. back. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's what I happened. Never, <laughs> girls walking. Ever get. Uh, yeah. Girl, honey, I'm, I'm, I'm taking all those, my steps I'm in. taking those ten steps, honey. Oh my and God. then I'm taking all ten back. <laughs> okay, go on. I, I agreed with you. I was like, yeah, that's exactly what it's been like. Um, the pediatrician and the person that did his release, um, she said it will get worse before it gets better. So we expected that. But again, that was eight days postpartum. We are now over four months postpartum. And I do feel like we're just now last week was a really big week. Um, It was the first time it was like last Wednesday. It was the first time that I feel like he like latched like fully. It wasn't a shallow latch. He like actually latched. My nipple was pulled out. I had a let down, like the whole thing. Um, and he was four months last week. So yeah. basically after you have a tie release, the first people call it revision. Revision is actually when it's repaired. So a release is the first step. It's either laser or some places cut them. His were lasered. It was like a five minute procedure. Yeah. Super easy, super quick. Um, but because the mouth heals so quickly, yeah, you, you have, have to, to do like- those stretches for four weeks every four hours. It's hell. And you cannot miss them because the mouth heals so quickly. And so that's what a revision is, is if it regrows, then you have to get it done again, which we thought we were going to have to get done. I I think that we've escaped it. Um, God, what a nightmare. At, oh, we literally thought that we were going to have to, but we started doing all of these exercises again. So anyways, we did four weeks of... This is misery. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Well, and every time you go in his mouth to do these stretches... It's just absolutely. It oh my god! And it hurts so him. much. Yeah, yeah. of course. So I mean, you're a, like, great. He's doing fine now. Open he's, wound, and yeah. you press on it. Mm-hmm. So you literally find the wound. You press, press, press it hard, and they make you at the um, doctor's office. They have a food scale. You're supposed to press five pounds of weight on it, which is like, I mean, you're yeah. like pushing. <gasps> they make you practice at the place to make sure you're doing Poor it guy. hard enough. So that was for four weeks, every four hours. Um, And we went through a stage of feeling like, okay, like things are better. But then as he grows, his caloric needs get higher. 
So once he kind of hit probably three months, that was when it was like, okay, this is like, I feel like we've taken a hundred steps back because it felt like he was never emptying me. Um, Oh, and also I had mastitis in between all of this and oversupply. I mean, the list goes on. Remember Um, I diagnosed you? Yeah, literally I was texting Amy and I was like, I have this, this, this. And she was like, call your fucking doctor now. Um, I was like, get on medication, bitch. Yeah. Oh, because it was at the point of no return. Where you need drugs. Yeah. It was, I mean, I was at the point of no return. And so, um, uh oh. Mom, <laughs> <laughs> so let's okay let's backtrack oh, you at three okay. months it started feeling like it was really hard again because he like because <laughs> he like wasn't you know and you, you can like feel it happening you're like i'm supposed to be saying yeah something, and then you keep talking because you're like it'll come and it'll come it's not nope, coming it's not. to me no, so i'm just gonna gone. call myself out on it it's gone anyways three months it got really really hard again and it got to a point where like there were several occasions where he would freak out at my boob or he just would not latch or he'd only do it for a few minutes. And I could tell that like, you can feel when it's a good latch and then you can also tell if a letdown has happened or not. So like that wasn't happening. And then it got really real when we went to the, we went to the doctor because he was having all of these stomach issues. And in between all of these appointments, we have seen the lactation consultant probably seven or eight times We have been to the chiropractor once a week. We have done feeding therapy. We have done cranial fascial therapy. We have done myotherapy. Like we have done. I honestly. Everything. This bougie little bitch has had it all. All of it. And now he just like Like smiles at me all the time. (laughs) He's like, "Hmm, aren't you happy with me now, mom? Um, He is a high maintenance bougie. Oh, yeah. And so we've done all of these things. I mean, appointment after appointment yeah, after appointment gosh. after appointment. And I'm like high key losing my mind. Yeah. Because nothing's nothing's working. Yeah. And nobody knows what to do. And so it's getting worse. And then it really, really got real when we went to the doctor. We went to the doctor because he was having a ton of stomach issues that we could not get to the bottom of. Um, and so he got weighed that day and my doctor said, we're going to do a food sensitivity test because it's got to be something that you're eating. And so we did a food sensitivity test. We tested everything. Like they laid out, it was like six pieces of paper and you just checked any food yeah. that you eat regularly or have eaten in the last like two weeks. So did all of that. And she was like, in the meantime, eggs is one of the top um, food allergies. So really let's go great. ahead. I yeah. eat eggs literally all day. All of the time, every day, multiple times a day. Yeah. And so she was like, let's start with that. That shows up really quickly if that's what it is. And we'll see. We'll, like, we'll go from there while we wait for your results to get back because the results take two weeks. So cut out eggs. And then I ended up going back 10 days later for like, I think that this was for his four month checkup. I don't know. We live, we've lived at the doctor. Um, and she weighed him again and he had not gained a single ounce in 10 days. And so that was when she was like, something's wrong. Yeah. Like whether it's your production or it ain't your yeah, production. It, and that's what I, I was like, trust You're me, a it's cow. not my production. Yeah. But she said whether it's your production or he is avoiding it because he knows it's going to cause pain or his latch is bad. Yeah. It could be any of these things. And so she texted the lactation consultant that works at the same office, which is my lactation consultant as well. And they came up with a plan for me to, we feed. It's called triple feeding. We feed, I pump, and then we do bottle. So it's like a 45-minute affair every single time. And we do it every single feed. And it is absolutely maddening. That's nightmarish. It's nightmarish because by the time you're done with that, it's like time to do it again. To get ready to do it again. Oh, Um, God. So we did that. Maybe I will adopt. (sighs) Honestly, maybe I will adopt because I, I just... I also feel like I've learned so much, I though, can't, though, if any of this happens with you, I do feel like, I don't know. I mean, she was a nightmare to feed for a long time because yeah, she I mean, was a fussy feeder. She would sucks. unlatch herself yeah. and just like, and she was angry and colicky for months. So I thought, and I, I thought she was like avoiding mm-hmm. it because I thought something was hurting her. Yeah. I gave up everything. We did the tests yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah. So this is just giving me PTSD. I have not been through this. I have not been through the lip tie, it's tongue a tie. Saga. No, I've been through the colicky baby and I've been through the breastfeeding hell. Yeah. But I have not been through the lip tie, tongue tie yeah. thing. 
where it's like never ending and it's him never not, ending. And it's I never, never had problems with her gaining weight. Yeah. So that, that's to when me, it got really scary was like the saving grace for me yeah. was that she was always gaining weight. Yeah. So you knew she was getting enough. So I knew she was getting enough, even though she was like such a little fucking right. diva about it. I was like, at least you're getting chunky. Yeah. The thing I will say that I said to you on the phone when you were losing it is Which time <laughs> he looks like yes. he's getting older. He looks like he's getting bigger. Mm -hmm. He looks really healthy. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's not gaining a ton of weight, but he's also like growing a lot. Yeah. Like he might be metabolizing a lot. Yeah. And he might be, obviously there's stuff to fix if the doctor's worried, but like he does look really healthy. Right. He didn't he's look acting, like emaciated. No, he's acting really healthy. Yeah. He's clearly maturing every time I see him. Right. And getting longer. Right. And so- that's what I was saying to you is like, if he, if every time we saw him, we were like, wow, why it's like dwindling. Like he looks the same. He's like yeah. wasting away, but he's not. He, he look, he's like thriving every time I see him. Right, right. So I feel like you are validated in what you're going through. It's obviously been validated. There are doctors that are, yeah. that you're working with, but, it, but when I see him, I'm not worried for him. Right. And I really, I know it's torturing either. you. Yeah. But it's gotten, we did two weeks of triple feeding um, and went back to the doctor and he had gained, I don't remember how much, but once they double their birth weight, they doctors want them to gain 0.4 to 0.6 ounces a day. He had been gaining 0.84 on average a day. And so they were like, you're good. Like he's, he's at yeah. a good place. So we stopped triple the feeding. triple feed, it was, God. It was awful. So we stopped doing that last week um and he's now he's broken 12 pounds Yay. so he's like gaining weight he's it's better food sensitivity test came back and the list i don't think i showed you a picture of it did no, i it's bad oh my god she thinks we i have a post, parasite we should post the i'll post i'll post it she thinks <laughs> i have a parasite she i walked in the office with wyatt and i'm like okay Jesus tell me what Christ. i don't need to eat and she walks in and she was like i know that this has been absolute hell for you and so I'm really sorry to tell you this because I don't want you to feel like this is another hurdle you have to come over or overcome. Come, come over. Yeah. Um, but she said, I think you have a parasite. And I was like, great. Okay. You're like, cool. Add it to the list. Yeah. What do I do? Um, is a parasite like a tapeworm where you get to lose weight in the car? No. She oh. said that 70%. <laughs> I actually, I used to think that too, <laughs> but she said, 70, like, can I have a parasite? <laughs> Give me a parasite. Anyone Kiss have me. an extra parasite? Honey? She said 70% of Americans have parasites. Ew. Just because it could oh, be and in then like I water definitely do or, because I have everything. Yeah, yeah. Every disease, anything anyone could get. I well, have it. It's probably. And then I reminded her that I, because the list I'll, we'll post it so that everybody can see was this long of foods. Yeah. And she said, and it's she, everything she you enjoy. It. It's everything that it's I enjoy. It's everything you enjoy. Everything. She pointed yeah. it and she goes, this isn't normal. And I was like, okay. And but so I sat that, there for a second. Doesn't that feel so good to get answers though? Yes. Yes. And I like, that is one thing that I, I'm very, very proud of myself for is I have fucking fought for this. I yeah. have, people have told me to stop. People have said, don't go to another appointment. People have said, take a break. People have said, formula's me, fine. Me, I'm people. All, I, I've, every, said, no, I've literally said all of those things to you. Everybody is people. Yeah. Everybody Because I just want you to feel better because I, I'm worried about you. Right, 100%. And anybody that does say that, Chase included, my parents included. Yeah. My, like, like, I never want to like tell you what to do, but no. like I also just want you to like not it kill yourself. It comes from love. It, it comes from love. Yeah. And I, anytime somebody suggests that, I'm not like, ah. Like I know that yeah. they're like, Hey, I see where you are mentally, and like maybe yeah, we should try I something just want different. You to be okay. Yeah, but I'm proud of myself for sticking it out because we got answers. Like we yeah. did finally figure yeah. out he is literally allergic to eggs, coconut, red pepper, um, banana, and um, peanuts. All five things I eat. Yeah, every single day. Red pepper or not? That's a bizarre one. But all of the other things. Yeah, I eat every Do you single follow day. Free to feed? No. She's really awesome. Okay. Um, she specializes in this and out food allergies okay. and colic I'll have to and all follow that. Her. Yeah, I I like she does seminars and stuff, but you should follow her. I will. Um both her kids. That's why I was like, or I was like, does he have like blood in his stool? Yeah. Because that's a really common like lac lactose thing. Yeah. But it's not lactose, right? Mm -mm. 
It's egg and yeah. A million I mean, other it things. could. Well, no, milk did show up, but yeah. I don't. I don't eat. And dairy honestly, anyways. he may and probably will grow out of it by yes. the time he's one. Well, so that was the thing when she came in and told me this. She was like, "So what I want you to do is cut all this out for three months. We're gonna see how it helps." And I mean, he's been. Y'all have both. Seen, he's literally a oh, different it's night and day. temperament. Yeah, he's so happy. He's not the same kid that no. we brought home from the hospital. He's literally a different kid. His theme song is still "You're the best." Yeah, no, he's still like wacko. <laughs> But yeah, literally, bring you down. He, he, like <laughs> found his tongue the other day, and so now all he does is, yeah. And I'm like, this is so yeah. on brand for you, Wyatt. Yeah. Um, but also, tongue movement is great because when he was born, he could move his tongue. Yeah. So I'm like, you keep moving that tongue, no, boy. He's, he's he's thriving. We'll take the wins. Um, but she told me to cut out all these foods. She said try it for three months, and then so we'll, like, what are you eating? It's really tough. What do, what do you eat? It's really tough. I can still eat um chicken turkey salmon all vegetables are can you okay eat rice? yes thank god i mean gluten was on there but it was like it, there literally were so many things it was just like you had that, to pick like yeah she yeah. was like if anything is um a three and above then i'm cutting that out but she said otherwise you i mean you won't be eating yeah, you anything won't be you'll be eat eating anything. air yeah um so i'm eating enough it's just it's different than my diet but it's fine. It's I mean, it's worked. And oh, it's been worth and there's it. nothing worse than colic and yeah. uh, an uncomfortable, miserable baby. So I would have I gave up everything. I was yeah. like trying everything. No, because it's been I you would don't give do a it fuck. forever. Yeah, I you don't cut give it a fuck if you ever have a piece of chocolate again. Right. If that's what makes it happen. Right. Because it's hell. Yeah. It's hell. On well, earth. And you know that they're in pain. Like he was. So, there's nothing like, looking worse. Back like and I knew this at the time, but like he was in so uncomfortable, so mm-hmm. much pain. 24 hours yeah. a day. Yeah. And he expressed it by crying. Yeah. Yeah. Just screaming, and not crying sleeping. All and day. she was the same way. She had really bad reflux and she was the same way. Yeah. And it makes you, it makes you insane. It makes you insane. And we've mm-hmm. done so many appointments. Um, triple feeding is for the birds. It's the absolute worst. Any mom that has had to do that, I, my heart goes out to you. Um, I feel like I was triple feeding last week right before my period. It's so- <laughs> just literally triple feeding. Um, I was like, no, you're not. And you're not done eating. We're going to no, keep going and you're going to go. Yeah. Um, and then the last Megan, who is a um, craniofascial therapist, lactation what consultant. Is that? What's, and what is the speech crano? language? Um, she's the one that has come over several times and done like all the body work on him. So our fascia is the layer yeah. right under our muscle. Yeah, we've talked. I've about done that myofascial release when my yes when I was in like my worst chronic pain okay. layer up. So that's the thing with ties. That's why doctors, if they don't, they should suggest that first, mm-hmm. even before getting a release, because our fascia is all connected. And a good way to explain it is, I don't know if this will like work on camera, but if so, our fascia is all connected, right? If I pull up right here this moves yeah so if this is out of whack up here it's not just out of whack up here it's out of whack right here too so with ties it's all connected so if there's a tie then shit's all oh yeah messed up down here too yeah and so he's tense all the time Mm -hmm. and and that's that's gotten better too but literally something so small as that affects the entire body especially when they're this big. Oh, like if I'll have a pain in my shoulder, it'll run into right. my ear and through my uh, cervical spine. Like right, it's all neck. connected. Like it's, it's crazy. And imagine being this big. If one thing is off, then like oh my god, your, your whole, whole body—that's like, all you got. Yeah. And so we've worked with Megan a ton. She's been absolutely fantastic. I actually would love to have her on the podcast. Yeah, we um, should. But she. So she has us doing exercises every single day, three to five times a day, just like stretching his mouth and moving and working with his tongue. And for the first time ever last week, when I was doing one of his tongue exercises, he stick stuck, he sticked it out. Mm. He stuck it out. So like seeing him have tongue extension is huge. I mean, I cried yeah. just because, I mean, it's literally like training. We're training yeah. him to be able to feed. And that's, that's what is so hard about, well, everything's hard about ties, but when they have ties, they literally have to relearn how to feed because the way that they were doing it before is now not even an option after release because it's, I mean, it's like a mouth surgery, yeah. you know? So they have to relearn. No, it's such an, it's just sounds, how to do it. 
It it's, sounds relentless. It sounds like awful. a nightmare. Yeah. It's absolutely awful. But we're not triple feeding anymore. We went out on the boat today and he fed out on the boat without like any help, without our little like supportive pillow. And we're we're coming out of the tie. Yeah, the this will all be a that we've been in. memory at some point. And it will. we won't laugh. No. But no. we will not be in misery anymore. I mean, yeah. maybe one day we'll, when we're old, we'll laugh. Old. We'll be like, oh, remember how dramatic we were? And then yeah. we'll be like, no, we really weren't. It was that bad. No, I just hopefully won't remember it at that point. Maybe I just, we'll just block it out. I want... Breastfeeding is so hard. It's absolutely so hard. And I hardest just, part. I always say that hardest part. It's the hardest part. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's harder than sleep deprivation. And it's then, you harder know, you than any other. And, I think it's harder than any other part. And nobody ever tells you that. No. Nobody ever says. Everyone's like, oh, just wait till this and just wait till that. And right. nobody ever says breastfeeding your child is going to be the hardest thing that you ever, ever do. And it will send you into, to, into a mental tizzy. Just and if you And if you give up. And you just go to formula. Good for fucking you. Yeah. Good for fucking you. I was psychotic for staying as long as I did. Yeah. Um, but if you want to, if it's something that's important to you and you really want to do that, then go for it. Yeah. And that's how I felt about yeah, it. I go mean, for I really it. I fight wanted for it, it. Fight through it and it gets better. Yeah. And I knew I knew that we could. I knew that I knew that we could. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's one I wish that more moms knew that a it's not natural and it's no. not easy some moms it does come easy for and that's so great but i do think the majority it doesn't and it no. takes practice and you have to learn how to do it and your baby does too um and then b ask for help ask for help go yeah. to a lactation consultant yeah. work well some work of them aren't somebody. that nice though like i know you had honestly a bad i've had a couple really weird experiences yeah you had a bad experience yeah um i've had I've had two that have been wonderful um, who I absolutely adore. And the two I'm going back to check in with her tomorrow just to like give yeah, her an we update. Yeah, should have her on the show. Yeah. Um, and then Megan is also one. Um, find a good lactation consultant, mm -hmm. but ask for help. Like there are resources. Um, we shouldn't have to figure it out on our own because there are people no. who literally have certifications in how to help you. Yeah. And how to help you do it. Yeah. And it's not natural. No, it's didn't not nat at all. Did not feel natural for me. And the hormones that come with it. I mean, it's yeah. It's well, it consumes awful. so much of your time. It consumes so much of your life, and then you also feel like you're not getting it right, and you're not right. nailing it. And it's portrayed in society as like this beautiful, magical thing. Yeah, and it can be. Oh, totally. But like, that's not really most of it. Most right. of it is really just hard. Well, and that's Hard the crazy work. thing. And we kind of said this a little bit last episode with Megan, but it releases oxytocin. And so when you do actually get that good latch, even if it's for a second, you're like, okay, like this feels good. Yeah. We're doing this. I'm obsessed with you. This is so beautiful. And then it just like can end like that yeah. because they break off or they're distracted or they're refusing the nipple or it hurts. I mean, there's so many things. It's yeah. God, it's just such a roller coaster of emotions and it's not easy. And I wish that that was more common knowledge. Yeah, I do too. I do think that more women are starting to talk about that, but advocate for yourself if you want to make it happen and ask for help because you can figure it out. And you're going to, are you, do you think you're going to go along with, with him the way you did with Eli? I'm so torn with that because I know um, I know that when I stopped with E, it was such a like eye-opening, like, holy shit, this was all consuming. Yeah. And I didn't really realize how consuming it was until I did stop. Chase had been telling me for months. Yeah. Like, you did like You gotta stop. You, yeah, you you can be done. You can be done. This is taking more from you than you realize. Um so there's that aspect of it, but then there's also the part of my head that's like, you have fought harder for this than you have anything else in your entire yeah. life. So it's almost like, God, do we see how long how we long can, go can go with it? I don't want to put a timeline on it. I mean, yeah. honestly, the fact that I've made it to four months with him feels 
Huge. Insane. Yeah. I'm, I'm shocked that we have made it this far. So are you going to start the baby led weaning kind of stuff? His I pediatrician mean, hasn't he? mentioned it. So yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think, I think once we, I think it, when they express interest, like Farrah was yeah. literally like staring at our food. Oh and yeah. Like Why it doesn't wanting do to eat. Like she would be like chewing when we would chew our yeah. food. She'd be like, yeah, and we're like, oh my god, babe, do you want like a bite? Why like a bite? Do that yet. Of course she did. She's her brain is like she's a little Italian she's baby, so smart and that. She, yeah, she was like staring at us, like she's like, give me the food. Yeah, and then we would give it to her. she. She ate so much when she was a baby, and she would eat anything. Like she would eat. Once I broke the seal and kind of gave her everything, like yeah. I got peanut butter out of the way right away. I got yeah. so many things out of the way because my doctor was like, let's just like introduce things. Yeah. Um. And she was eating everything. Now, as a toddler, I swear to God, she won't eat fucking anything. She you ate a yogurt that, pouch though. today, like yeah. at school. Do you? So our kids are both in school now, and we'll talk more about it on another episode. But like, she doesn't eat a bite of food at school. She still isn't. Not one bite. She they they get they said, and she's having a great time. Like yeah. she's laughing and making friends. Yeah. But she will not eat a bite of food. Mm-hmm. Not one bite. And when she gets home, she will. she'll eat like nuggets. She'll eat yogurt pouches. She'll eat any fruit snack, obviously. Yeah. Any cookie, candy, or ice cream. Duh. But I can't give that to her all the time. I know. But like, they don't eat. They'll start. They don't sh- fucking eat. She eat. used to eat. I used to make salad. She would eat salad yeah. as a baby. Yeah. Oh, my God. He would eat like Brussels sprouts and like, I mean, in- anything. And then one day he was like, yeah, I don't want to know. No. None of it. We made, like, my husband will make, like, these elaborate dinners, and he'll be like, oh, she's definitely going to eat this. And I'm like, okay, babe, but, like, can you prepare yourself for her to, like, Not. say no thank you? <laughs> yeah. And she'll be like, no thank you. <laughs> yeah. He gets so mad, and I'm like, honey, pork roast it's Mm-mm. not something that Your she's seared ahi tuna interested is not in. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. the spicy tuna roll that you I think put it's together. normal. I feel like any mom that I've brought this up with is, like, they're busy. Like they're just, they're yeah. busy at this age. What does that mean? Like they'll exist on like a yogurt pouch and like two li- licks of a chip. And yeah. Like they'll three eat when they're of hungry. apple juice. And like they're they fine. They truly do eat when they're hungry. Cause there are some times where I eat. Yeah, they dog food. So today, um, the school update that yeah, I got so for his lunch said extra meatballs. Shut and up. Extra. Um, he asked for more? More. No. I was like. Eli? Yeah, I know. He asked for more food. More. It literally said extra under two things. It was, I think, peaches and meatballs. Oh my I know. gosh. I was she like, said, Farrah ate this? none of her food and drank most of her milk, which Aww. is the weirdest fucking thing. She doesn't drink milk. Oh, yeah. So she does not drink milk. A- after we stopped breastfeeding, I could barely get her to take a sip of milk. We've never had her on milk. We do yogurt pouches because she just won't do right. milk. At school, she will drink milk, but she won't eat. She'll figure it out. How fucking weird of yeah, her to drink so milk, weird. though. Like, what is her deal? That's so like, weird. Like, oh, I'm just, don't tell my mom. <laughs> like, I literally tried to force her to drink milk for a year and a half. Yeah. And now I don't it even offer happen. it to her. But at school, she's like, oh, hand me the milk. Well, um, that's the update. That's the update. We're going to we're gonna wrap this one up. But um, we love you guys. And be sure to check out Maker. Oh, yeah. And drink we share our wine. code. By the on, way, every time. Oh, go on. I was going to say we share our code on our stories and everything. I've had oh, like a little more than half of this and I am legitimately buzzed. Yeah. No, and I this can't is coming from too. like me who. I'm a seasoned drinker. Yeah. I mean, I was like drinking. I was a bartender for two million years and like these things kind of. No, they. They, they send me. Yeah. No, they work. They work. They're good yeah. stuff. They Maker. send me. They send me where I need to go. Um, All right, guys, we will see you guys next time. This is Rock Me Mama. Bye. Rock, rock, rock me mama.